Hello everybody and welcome to a re-review of Liam's Library. Uh, today I will be talking about a short story by Caitlin Marcier entitled The Water. Um, it was brought to my attention by an online friend of mine, uh, Celine McLeod, who edited this book, uh, a short story collection of female horror authors. Um, now exclusively, uh, the only two writers I've ever really read properly um, as female writers is Stephen King's wife, Tabitha King. I've read her thriller, Wolves at the Door, and the graphic nature of that story is something to be admired. Um, it leaves you gasping, and but her description and her just her prose is so po poetic, it reminds me of the way Peter Straub used to write. The other author is Daphne de Moria, of course, who wrote Don't Look Now and The Birds and Rebecca. Now, apart from that, and I will say this, I spent years reading Poppy Z. Bright, um, now knowing that he has transitioned in 2010. His name is now Billy Martin, and uh, I don't think he's writing novels anymore. But my um, first uh, attempt at reading his prose was uh, the short story collection Swamp Fetus. Uh, very scary stuff, very graphic, very horror, extreme gore and very fantastic. So I just thought I'd mention, mention that um, because now I'm reading a short story by Caitlin Marcier and I read it this morning um, after I woke up and it was a delight. It was a great read. Um, I've re reviewed don't Look Now by Daphne du Maurier, and it's about, it's a thriller that takes place around the canals in Venice. Now, this story takes place at a very famous canal in Montreal, uh, where people have died, and people have died over the years in all sorts of different circumstances. Now, our main character, um, Amelie, she has a panic disorder, she seems to have asthma and she doesn't like the canal she's got this reverberating memory of her grandmama telling her stay away from the canal stay away from the water there's a reason they built the walls so high almost like an omen you know just echoing you know to her present life friend of hers theo uh tells her to go and so our main character, she likes to jog, but she doesn't really like the socialising aspect of it. She accidentally finds herself in some morning, uh, you know, mother's jogging groups and just doesn't like the social aspect of it. She prefers to sort of, you know, get, get her energy out on her own. So her friend suggests, how about you run around the canal? She thinks it's a terrible idea because of the warning she's had from her grandma ever since she was a little kid, just stay away from the canal. But she runs around her and... We see how severe her asthma is or her panic disorder is. It doesn't go into too much detail, but you know she's struggling with it. Um, and so while she's working out, she's doing a counting game so she can control her breathing, she looks into the canal and she sees a man looking back at her from under the surface of the water. Now, is this man really there or is he not? Well, it turns out he is. She shuts her eyes and opens them again and he's still there drowning under the surface of the water. So she dives in to save this man. Now, he starts pulling her down. Like, her efforts to save him are just getting more futile by the second because he's drowning both of them. So in the end, she's got to kick him away and swim to the surface. But as she nearly breaks the surface, another hand grabs her and she looks down, but it's, it's a woman this time. And the woman is pulling her down, but the man's still there drowning too. It's about this time in the story you start to realise this is a supernatural story. You know, there can't be two separate people drowning at the same time. These are people who died in the past in this infamous canal, and it's very scary. She nearly gets away from the woman, but another hand grabs her, and it's a little kid dressed in old, old-timey clothes. So he's been down there for so many years, drowning and drowning and drowning. And, it, you know, we come to a climax like that. We come to a climax with her not escaping the canal and her grandmother's warning echoing in her brain, telling her there's a reason they built the walls so high. You know, those people never escaped those dark depths. They never got out of there. And now she's one of them. Now, before I finish this review, I just want to quickly say, 
it reminded me of a Ray Bradbury story. Now, Ray Bradbury only wrote a few novels, but he mainly wrote short stories. Now, one of his novels is called Death is a Lonely Business, about a man who goes to Venice near the canals and sees someone under the water who has drowned. Now, that is the start of the story. It's one of his less popular novels, but it's one of my favourite ones. Now, reading this story, The Water, by Caitlin Marcier, it really, it really just brought up those, those two, two different stories that I read, it reminded me of Don't Look Now by Daphne du Maurier. It reminded me of Death is a Lonely Business by Ray Bradbury. But it was a complete story all on its own. It's a great read. It's a fantastic read. And I can't wait to get into the rest of this uh, short story collection. And the short story collection is called... Not Just a Pretty Face. Now, I knew that. I've done this review a couple of times. Uh, I just had to do a couple of um, edits, which I'm glad I did. Um, it allowed me to take my time and discuss this story a little bit better. I'm not really here to tell you what the whole story is about, but this, the story gives me a feeling. This this writer, Caitlin Marcier, she knows what she's doing. She knows what she wanted from this story. And that's why it's not necessarily like, over, over long. It's a... Uh, I enjoyed it, I enjoyed it, and I think it really suits the start of the story. Like I said, there is a story before this, but it's actually a poem, and I'm not here to um, analyse poetry on Liam's library. Um, I don't think I've got the stuff for it. I'm here to talk about prose and horror, and, uh, and a good and upcoming writer. So thank you for the opportunity, uh, Celine McLeod. Thank you so much, Caitlin Marcier, for giving me a really creepy, super scary story to read when I first woke up this morning. Um, stay tuned next week when I do uh, The Mangler by Stephen King and uh, take care of one another, read some great books, watch some even better fucking movies and look after yourselves. Bye.